Over the span of Roblox's existence, there's been one genre of games that has absolutely and consistently dominated the community. Simulators. Just in case you don't know what simulators are, they are a type of game in Roblox where you're usually clicking repetitively to increase the number of something that is being stored in some kind of bag which you can then sell to be able to afford a more powerful clicker that's going to get you more currency and better tools and then keep repeating it over and over again for no purpose. Jokes aside, simulators can be really satisfying games at times for when you might be tired of PvP and want to relax and play a chill game. They've obviously gotten a lot of shade due to the repetitiveness and similarities among these games. Even with all this, they still manage to put up amazing player count numbers and continue to dominate Roblox. However, there is one simulator that is arguably the greatest and most unique simulator to ever touch the game of Roblox. B-Swarm oh Simulator. B-Swarm Simulator is a game where you start out with a shovel and collect pollen until your bag fills up, which you can then convert into honey, which allows you to purchase more tools and bigger bags, which if you repeat this process enough, you can get overpowered items like the porcelain backpack, the petal wand, or the dark scythe if you don't touch grass. So on the surface, it seems very similar to the outline that's been created for a generic simulator, but no. B-Swarm separates itself from an everyday simulator because of unique concepts like passive abilities, the ability to pick up items that spawn randomly, and multiple locations to farm in that tend to preferences in the hive which you can build and grow stronger. These differences that B-Swarm holds have captured the attention of many players including me, and the variety of content in the game keeps players hooked and gives them a motive to want to push further. So how did this all start? For starters, the game was inspired by Snow Shoveling Simulator by a user named Loaderman23. This game has elements similar to Beast Swarm where you shovel snow and sell to get better things and apparently pick up baddies. I watched Onnit's talk about Beast Swarm and he explains that in order to make his game successful, he needs to lure players in with the familiarity of simulators but then prove that his game is different. Onnit wanted to go for a more cute style of art, so after months of development, Beast Swarm Simulator was finally released on March 21st, 2018. The game started out very simple. You could only get 25 bees and there was no porcelain gear. This would all change soon though. On April 10th, 2018, this is when the game would see its first update. For starters, the beginning bear, Black Bear, would see 20 more quests, with the reward being a diamond egg. As well as that, the 25 B zone was added, where you can now purchase extra high slots all the way up to 50. Hats were added, which gives players more drip to cop, as well as offering bonuses like instant pollen to honey conversion, higher B ability rate, and more. On it also added less important balance changes like raising the health of certain monsters. A camera glitch would come into Roblox that would bug the shop cameras, but luckily it would be fixed quickly. On April 27, 2018, the game would see a huge update. The first traveling bear, Sun Bear, would be added to the game, also bringing with him new drippy porcelain gear that can increase your capacity and boost white flowers a bunch. As well as this, four new bees would be added, the Looker Bee, Commander Bee, Music Bee, and the Photon Bee. As expected, this introduces the concept of focus and critical strike into the game as well. Tired of having to run around to collect your tokens? Oh look, a new token link was added to the game that can do it for you. You also get honey when you use it. Nice. Also, tickets were added to the game. Now you can buy event bees from the ticket tent or other things from special generators around the map. As well as this, field boosters were added, which you can unlock if you have a certain number of bees. Now boosting just got real. Science Bear also got new quests and you can gain science enhancement from completing them. You also gain polar power from completing polar bears quests now. Wow, that's a lot of buffs. Also, too many people were bypassing the 25B gate with the red cannon, so it was changed from 20 bees to discover to 22. There were many more changes, but these were less important, so I'm not gonna list all of them. Oh, there was a bug in which you could kill bears before, but that was fixed, so good job on it. Now it's June 4th, 2018, and the game has just hit 100 million visits. Oh look, a new code was added to celebrate. Oh my god, what's that music? It looks like the ants have evaded the map with a new game mode called the Ant Challenge, where you can commit genocide to a variety of different ants in an effort to save the ant hill, I guess? Tired of having level 1 trash bees in your hive? Well, it's your lucky day, because bee leveling was added into the game, which you can do with treats, which you can now buy for a max price of 10,000 honey each. You can buy them in stacks of 1, 10, 100, or 1,000. Other fruits include sunflower, strawberry, blueberry, pineapple, and the rare star treat, which grants 100 bombs while transforming your bee into a new gifted bee, which has been added with increased stats, global stat bonuses that affect the whole hive. They also have a new ability called Inspire, which motivates your bees to go super sane and collect two times as much pollen. You can also obtain gifted bees in these ways listed here. But we need to focus on this new menace that we found at the top of the mountain. And it's on it? Yeah, that's right. On it pulled a slick one and added himself into his own game. He offers five really hard quests, but if you persevere, he'll reward you with a star treat. He can be found in the new 30B area at the top of this mountain with this lid that's apparently really hard to open. As well as this new panda bear quest centered around the ant challenge have been introduced. And the mother bear was also added. A super caring bear that's like a mother for you and your bees. Also, new ticket tent items were just added. The star treat, the gummy bee, and the tabby bee. And as usual, there are a bunch of small patches that I won't waste your time listing. It's September 10th and a very sad day for everyone. 
the beekeeper's mask was nerfed. On the bright side, everybody who had it was refunded their stuff and they could buy it again if they wanted to. Also, the day before was a pretty big update as well. The nighttime cycle was added, which follows a 10 to 30 minute daytime. During nighttime, there was a new boss added, the vicious bee. This bee would hide in the ground and pick on an innocent player to start attacking. You could tame the vicious bee, however, with 250 stingers, which were just added and can multiply your attack by 1.5 times for 30 seconds. The vicious bee was one of the two bees to be added, which also doubled as mobs. Other nighttime items were added, such as fireflies, which drop new moon charms, which you could use to buy a moon amulet, which gives you enchanted buffs for your hive. What was that? Oh, it was a new sprout that was added into the game, which you can collect pollen from and explode into many fruits, and if you're lucky, you can get an egg. Also, new drip was added into the game in the form of boots, which increased move speed, jump power, and movement collection, which collects pollen as you move across a field. Grand Master Badges were also added, which required 20 times the amount of stuff that the Master Badge would have required, but it gives 40 tickets for completion. Tired of having to wait centuries for your flowers to regrow? Well, you're in luck because sprinklers were just added into the game. You can find them in the new shop called the Badge Bearers Guild in the 15B area. Also, a new bee was added, the Puppy Bee, which you can buy for 500 tickets. It's kinda cute. Oh wait, never mind, it's garbage. But don't worry, you can level it up with a new leveling cap, which allows bees to go until level 15. Also, flowers can grow faces now and spit out sparkling patches that grant rewards according to the field that's on. Tired of having to use an expensive star treat or star egg or jelly until you get a gifted bee? Well, great, because the star jelly was added, which can give you a gifted bee while changing the type. Oh, also, I guess Onnit really loves the puppy bee because it was added to the front of the ticket tent decoration. Also, the new wealth clock was added for long-time grinders, and if you stay in the game for two hours, you can use it, and it will give you a ticket and a honey per pollen stack. Also, it stacks five times, and you can use it every 30 minutes. It is now November 18th, and the six annual Bloxes are here. Oh, look, Bee Swarm was nominated for five categories. Great going, it. Also, there's a Black Friday sale, and game passes are off 40%. Funny, because I'm actually writing this on Black Friday. The Badge Bears Guild is looking a bit dry. Hold up, what the heck is that thing? Oh, it's a blender, which you can now use to form some tasty consumable treats which have just been added. You can also get them from mobs and quests, and they gave a temporary buff to you in your hut. Also, you now need more than honey to afford some items, as crafting was just implemented into the game. Now you need materials such as red and blue extracts to craft some of the better items. Thankfully, this doesn't apply to backpacks and collectors for now. Two new bees have been added to the game, and they bring the new mark tokens with them. What's that over there? Oh, it's a new stump field, which is home to a snail with 30 million health. What? That's gonna take days! Well, the health saves, so just go AFK in the field overnight, and that should do the trick. There's been a new scientific revolution around the map, and Science Bears created these new translators that you can use to communicate with one of the three new NPCs that don't speak English. The Riley B and Bucko B have an ongoing beef. Let's see how that pans out. There's also a new badge out, which you can now earn tickets from just from being online. There are also new endgame masks, the fire mask, the bubble mask, and the honey mask, which hold passive abilities that are helpful to each respective color. Good luck crafting them, though. Honor also added the Crimson and Cobalt Guards, which gives you a cool trail as you walk, which you can show off to your friends. Also, remember how I said that the Fire Mask and Bubble and Honey Masks were endgame? Well, I lied because Honor just added three even more expensive masks that go off the abilities of the other one. Yeah, good luck crafting those. I guess Honor finally realized that the Puppy Bee was trash and buffed the mess out of it. Still not very good though. Also, the Wealth Caught cooldown was increased to one hour. Dang it, I'm gonna have to stay in the game for even longer. But that's okay because you have a 15 minute grace period to be offline now. Oh look, the Bloxy results are in, it looks like Beast Swarm took home Game of the Year. Good for you, it. Also, tickets aren't going to cut it for Gummy Bee anymore, as you now need 2,500 gumdrops to craft it. Also, yet another Puppy Bee buff was implemented into the game, and this time doubling the bond granted per level while also gaining 15% movement speed. Still trash though, but I respect your efforts on it. Also, the first Beesmas is just concluded, and the Festive Bee can now be obtained for 500 tickets. As well as this, Basic Bee has just had a minor buff, and it makes it the most overpowered bee the game has ever seen. Like, holy. Boosting just took a huge hit as well, lowering the maximum field boost stack from 10 times to 5 times. To compensate, on it just bunt a whole bunch of existing items. I guess that works. It's April 5th and Black Bear just got another 20 quests. This quest line is getting painful. As well as that, Onnit just added a honey counter at the top of the screen as an alternative to the default Roblox leader. A new mechanic was just added, leaves. If you see a floating leaf coming out of a certain patch in the field, you need to get your butt over there immediately because it's going to drop a token. What the heck was that? Oh, it was just one of the new passive abilities that have been added to the game. It's a new concept where an ability will activate periodically after a certain requirement has been met. Also, red and blue backpacks were added so that you're not stuck using the same portal hive until you get 250 million honey. They also added the golden rating and the spark staff to the top shop as well. But we need to focus on a huge problem in the game. The gummy mask is running absolutely rampant right now and people are making billions. Oh wait, never mind, it got nerfed. Also, the demon and diamond mask got buffed too. Good job, on it. Tired of your favorite blue field being a small and compact area? Well, you're in luck because its size has just doubled. 
pretty big test room contest has concluded and the winners got some pretty cool prizes. It's September 26th and the game just got possibly its biggest update yet. Have you already completed the game and there are no more zones to get to? Well you're in luck because the 35B zone was added and boy there is a lot to cover in this one. There are two new fields, the Pepper Patch and the Coconut Field which is home to the strongest boss yet with 250,000 health and sharp claws that can deal a considerable amount of damage. If you somehow manage to beat it, you can go into the coconut cave and buy coconut claws in the coconut canister with the new tropical drinks of coconuts you got. This is one of the two new shops in the game because the petal shop was also added here where everything in here is magic and requires this weird petal that you get from a strange bear that's standing right in the middle. Spirit Bear has 30 quests in total and every 10 quests will reward you with the spirit petal which you can use to get the new Windy Bee which blows a tornado that helps you collect tokens around the map. You can get the Windy Bee by donating new cloud vials to the all new RNG based wind shrine which you can give items to in hopes for good wins. There's also a rogue version of the Windy Bee, so be careful not to get blown. Also, the Sun Bear just came back with 10 new quests. This time he brought some jelly bean monsters that spit jelly beans that you can eat to get powerful buffs. In this update, the passes for the three mid-game masks were implemented into the game. And don't worry, you still keep them when you upgrade to the higher tier masks. Also, there was a new hotbar which you can keep items in, and it's good for holding things that you could have gotten from the new memory match, which is a new mini game. another one being aphids, which will randomly jump scare players that are caught lacking in their favorite field. Also, you don't need evictions anymore to hatch new eggs, you can now use an egg as a royal jelly and transform an existing bee by dragging it onto your hive. Wow, that's a lot. It's October 29th, and the first ever Bee Swarm Simulator merch has just dropped. Now you can show off your love of playing Bee Swarm at school. Also, why is the Christmas music getting louder? Oh look, Beesmas is here, and there's a whole new rarity. There's surely no problems with it. Also, everyone got new quest lines, and you can get a new cute bear as you pick. Wait, why are people suddenly making trillions? Oh god, it's the festive bean, and they're absolutely broken right now. Apparently, people can share them, and it's getting out of hand. Hopefully, Anna will nerf it. Oh wait, there's the nerf. It's February 7th, 2020, and the last weekend to complete the Beesmas quest. If you haven't completed it already, it's time to lock in. Oh look, the test room is open again. It's April 3rd and Onyx has added the Supreme Star Amulet, bringing new overpowered passives that you can now unlock with it. If you're lucky, you might get a double passive. It's April 12th and we just got another Mythic Bee. Wow, there's a lot to read on this one. It brought a new concept called Pollination with it and wow, this changes the game. Also, Brown Bear was completely reworked and he gives new quests every hour now. Oh, and Black Bear just got another 20 quests. Also, you can get the Cub Buddy from completing 300 Brown Bear quests, but it's not like anybody's gonna do that. It's August 13th and the game just hit 1 billion visits. Fast forward 4 months and it's business again. Bee Bear is back as well as a new double pollen buffs that last for two days. Bee equips were just added and now you can give your bees some long awaited drip. Don't go AFK in the spider field because the snow bear might kill you. It grows bigger and stronger with each kill so be careful. If you kill it, you get tons of snowflakes and buy some stuff in the new catalog that was just added. This update is really cool. On it says next week there will be even more content. Oh shoot, here it is. It took a little longer than a week but that's okay. Bee bear just got 10 more quests and if you complete them you get a festive ref which you can just give to your festive bee in hopes for an OP festive bar. Oh and now you don't have to kill yourself to escape the gummy bear, you can just teleport back to your hot. The infamous BBM quest is here now and oh my god it's insanely hard. Wow, Elo's really pushing the grind. Oh, who is that? Yo, it's Gifted Ty and he just skyrocketed past Elo. Oh wait, he was using data loss glitches and now he's banned. Dang it, that's crazy. Apparently not enough people were able to complete the BBM quest, so Onnit just added an extension. It's March 21st and Beesmas is officially over, but the game just had its third birthday so there's a new code in the game and wow, it's OP. Also, Onnit just threatened to nerf the mess out of the jelly bean, so use them when you can. Also, updates are getting a lot more spaced out again. D did Onnit fall asleep? Oh, he did and woke up just in time for Beesmas. Wait, where is Beesmas? Oh, Onnit just overslept. But it's here now. And it's a lot of the same stuff as last year's. But wait, there is one thing that's different. On it added cough shrooms. This is a hugely RNG based thing and forced a lot of people to quit the game. Like I almost quit when playing it. They come from planners, a new concept where you can play the game even longer and leave your computer on to explode just to get some resources in the game. There's also a new bear called Dapper Bear. He doesn't have any quests yet. Don't worry, on it will add them soon. Also, he added two mythic bees and their abilities are insane. Especially buoyant bee. Everyone's switching to blue now because of it. With this update came a lot of glitches though, like some puff from spawning ones, but those were fixed. Blue hives are running absolutely rampant, even to the point where Onnit is trying to figure a way to tone them down. It's been two months and Beesmas is still going strong. Oh, and it just got an extension to help players with the BBM quest, which is absolutely hell this year too. The gummy bear quest is almost impossible too, because you need to destroy five legendary puff shrooms and most players haven't even seen one. As Beesmas is coming to a close, many players need to clutch up on their quests, especially the RNG ones. Oh look, Onnit gave the puff shrooms to players at the end. Too bad there weren't a lot of players on it this time. It's March 31st and Beesmas is officially over. But there's still a lot of promised content that we didn't get, like Dapper Bear quest lines and new planners, as well as some new gear. At least we got the end game collectors though. Oh, the mob stopped moving. Oh, it looks like Onnit fell asleep again and now we're in the present. Overall, Beastworm is a hugely successful game and one of the best on the Roblox platform. I think if Onnit starts updating the game in the frequency that he did at the beginning, this game has the potential to become huge. For now, we can only sit back and watch what direction Onnit's going to take this game. Thanks for watching.